name is Claudia and I'm here from around your town. We are here to interview Mayor Savanjan. Hello, Mayor Savanjan. Welcome. Hi, Claudia. Thank nice you for your you. time. Nice to see you too. Thank you for coming. We have a couple questions to ask you now that you're going to be running again for election for mayor in Waukegan. Okay. Um, first question is, what have you done for the city for the past four years and why should we vote for you in this running election again? Well, one of the things that, that we accomplished in the last four years was that we fixed a broken government. When I came in, the city of Waukegan was almost bankrupt. Actually, it really was bankrupt. We didn't have enough okay. money to pay our bills or to make payroll. It was filled with what they call political cronies. And that means that the people were hired because of who they were related to or the fact that they maybe worked in a political area uh, and were able to um, get influence and get a job that way. Mm -hmm. uh, people that really didn't know what they were doing were in actually very important positions and the city suffered for it. So one of the things that I'm very proud of is the fact that we took city government, we shook out as much of the cronyism as we could and brought in professional replacements to be able to operate this government like a business and so that it actually does a much better job with people's taxpayer dollars than it was before. Okay. Well, I think that's wonderful. It, it actually was Definitely. quite an accomplishment because nobody thought Waukegan could be fixed. They thought it was so badly broken as far as government, not the community, but the government. And so what we did was we had to be very tough on the budget because we knew that the revenues were not coming in as strong as they had been in years before because the Great Recession was starting. Mm -hmm. And so we literally ended up laying off 50% of the people that work in City Hall. Now we had to lay off eight police officers because the police union would not work with us and find a compromise to be able to keep everybody on. Mm -hmm. The firemen did work with us and they did a great job keeping all of their guys on. Our police lieutenants were able to work together with us. The sergeants were. Um, our public works department unfortunately took a hit because again the union would not sit down and come to some short-term agreement to keep everybody working. And then some of our clerical people were lost as well. But you know, the interesting thing is that we actually are a better business and a better body of government now with fewer people because the people that are here are all the ones with seniority. So these are the okay. people who know how to get things done. And I'm very proud of the people that I work with because a lot of people looked at us and said they won't make it one year. And here we are almost four years later and we've <laughs> made it and we're actually better off. Absolutely. Well, that's great. You know, and I think that a town like this needs somebody to come in and, you know, make things right if they're not going the right way. So I think that's a great thing. Yeah. I have a second question for you here. The city of Waukegan has laid off police officers, as you were mentioning earlier, yes. in the past years. In order to reduce the deficit, that's why they were, um, they were getting laid off. What are your plans on reducing Waukegan's debt without having to lay off city employees? Well, I think we've, we've done our last layoffs. We didn't have to lay anybody off last year. And actually, we've brought back 15 police officers, okay. so we've added seven. Now, they're not all on duty right now. Some of them are finishing up with Academy. And actually, I think on Friday, I'm swearing in a few new ones. Okay. And we also brought in 12 new firemen as well. And that was done with federal grants. But we stabilized the financial situation here in, in government. Um, we will not be doing any more layoffs. In fact, we're looking to see how we can add some personnel because we do have areas that have been unfilled for a couple of years. There used to be an economic development director here at the city, and after I came in, um, I, ha I did a state of the city address where I told everybody what happened and how it happened, and the aldermen were not happy with that. So they began to pick away at my ability to operate, and they got rid of an economic development director who was very important for a community. They also got rid of what is known as the administrator. Um, the office outside of my door um, was actually run by somebody who was an alderman when I came in. Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't keep him on, but we did for a little while to allow him to kind of wrap up. And the alderman told me after he left that um, I was not going to be allowed to replace him. Okay. And that was troubling because this makes me the first mayor going back 30, 40 years who wasn't allowed to have the type of staffing that was needed to do the job. But we found somebody internally. We brought him down, a woman down from planning named Noelle Kisher. And truthfully, she's done a great job for stepping into a position that she wasn't familiar with. So in spite of the restraints or constraints that were put on us, we've been able to keep going. And I think things are starting to pick up. The economy is moving again. Yes. One thing is that I'm really proud of the fact that since December of 2009, 
we've issued over 540 brand new business licenses. Oh, wow. And unemployment was 18.8% in 2010. Okay. January of this year, we had cut it in half, nine and change. Now it's crept up a little bit again because of the weather, but it is on track to go down again. Okay. So even despite the fact that our resources have been uh, very short, um, we've been through some tough times, we've had some political fighting, we've managed to keep city government going, but we've also kept the city going as well. As I said, with the, with the job numbers and with the um, business permits, and if you look at our downtown, downtown didn't look like this four years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a very scary place to come. And with basically nothing, we took the downtown, refurbished it, and now we have a place where people want to come and enjoy themselves. So I'm very proud of that. That's wonderful. I think that that's great. You know, I mean, if you're going from, we have a recession right now, or we're going through an economy that's, you know, barely moving up right now. And I think that if you come in and you're increasing jobs and things like that, I think that any community would need that. So. And, we, and I'm proud of that because yeah. we have a very good relationship with the business community. Now, sometimes you'll hear from people who aren't happy with us because they may want to do something that, really isn't maybe in the best interest of the community or they don't want to follow certain rules and regulations. But by and large, I think the number of new business licenses shows Absolutely. that we are business friendly. And the thing is that all of our industrial parks and business parks, they're almost completely filled to capacity. In fact, we're building new ones. Mm -hmm. So it does show Waukegan, which is really the hub of the metro area between Milwaukee and Chicago, mm -hmm. is starting to show its strength, its which is its location. So the city is moving forward. That's great. Now, actually, relating to that, I have a question for you. It's about the Cardinal Health. Um, yes. It will be moving to a different location. And uh, what are your plans on the soon to be for that vacant spot in uh, Fountain Square? Well, it's, it's a great opportunity. Um, we are sad to see the um, the line jobs go, mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to Ohio. So that's the, what they're doing is they're coalescing their manufacturing in okay. one area. But the white collar and research jobs, many of them are staying on that facility. But okay. now Cardinal Health is fi has finally come in, and we had a meeting about a week and a half ago, and they are going to allow the city of Waukegan to annex all of that property. Okay, and that's hugely important because Fountain Square, a lot of that property you cannot develop big stores on it because the city of Waukegan signed an agreement with Walmart and the agreement basically says that nothing that competes with Walmart will be on property that the city owns. Mm -hmm. So it really does constrain what can go there. Yes. Cardinal Health, or as it's known as McGaw Park, is going to be a clean canvas that we're going to be able to design what we want on there. Mm -hmm. I have some concepts in mind. I'd okay. like to see what they call a lifestyle center which is, it's a combination of shopping, restaurants, and then around it, mm -hmm. you will get um, office space, you'll get research facilities, uh, white collar jobs, things to attract, you know, things that young professionals would be working in. And that's really what we're trying to do, great. is to build a new economy based on the young urban professional. That's great. And I mean, once again, you're going to be making more jobs out of that, too. Absolutely. So that's, yes. that's definitely a positive Plus, we sell them more water. And for us, that's, yes. a, that's big money for us, so it's great. <laughs> Definitely. Um, as a mayor, how can you prevent on business corporations not to relocate to a different place? It's difficult mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times we don't hear about it until the decisions have been made in the boardrooms that are maybe in Chicago or New York or L.A., then we will get letters notifying us that this change is about to occur. Cardinal Health was that way. We didn't hear about it, actually. We heard about an hour before the news stations did. Oh, my. And that's difficult. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when a corporation makes up its mind that it's going to move somewhere, there's, there's usually reasons for it. One of the problems that we have in Lake County is that corporations that want to be near what they call a brain trust, which is like University of Illinois, Chicago, Northwestern, where they have... R&D, where they have um, um, labs that can develop new products and new concepts. We don't have that in Lake County. We don't have a true four-year university. We have Roslyn Franklin, but it's okay. highly specialized. So one of my long-term goals is to bring in the type of university that will offer R&D and uh, those sorts of um, uh, resources so that corporations won't go to Chicago. We lost okay. Motorola. After Google bought them, Motorola sent their R&D division into Chicago. Then WMS Gaming, which is the world's largest producer of um, video poker machines and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. 
instead of expanding here, they sent that division into Chicago for those reasons. Okay. So I'm hoping, working with the county and the state, that in the next 10 to 15 years at the latest, mm -hmm. that we will be able to have a true four-year university in Lake County. Okay, all right, that's great. There are over 41,000 registered voters in Waukegan. Only 10% to 14% come out to vote on local elections. Right. What are your plans to encourage and motivate local residents to elect on this re-election that you're going for? Well, we hope that the message that we send out with our mailers, um, through, the, through our uh, interviews that maybe go over radio or we'll post on our okay. website, will drive some of the vote. Um, it's a difficult question. I, I mean, it truly is. It's one that bothered us the first time as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the funny thing is, in the presidential election, you get a big turnout. But then as soon as you shift over to the municipal, that turnout seems to fall off. And I think part of it is that there's, in a lot of people's lives, there's a disconnect between themselves and the community that they live in. They work somewhere, they come home, they close the door, they put on the TV, and they're really not in Waukegan. They could be doing that anywhere. So what we've been trying to do is to create a downtown and also just a community in general that engages people, provides them with cultural opportunities, with entertainment opportunities, because that's the first bait that you need to get people to actually become more functional members of the community. Um, we do have a good volunteer base though. Even okay. though people don't get out to vote, we have a lot of people that volunteer. So there is that concern and care about the community. For some reason though, it doesn't translate into votes. And it's, it's been a topic of discussion ever since I've been involved in, in politics, which is going on about 16 years now. Yeah, and um, I've seen these low turnouts at municipal elections. And I will say that my last election, um, we were very proud of the fact that we turned out a large percentage of the Latino community to mm -hmm. get out to vote. And that was important because we wanted their participation and they have to be part of it. Hopefully, maybe videos like this, interviews like this, people will see this Definitely. and they'll say, you know what, I want to be engaged in that. This time, I'm going to go out and vote. And you know, I always say, I'd like to have your vote, but if I don't get your vote, just the fact that you go out and do vote mm -hmm. is important. Absolutely. I think it's very important that people get involved in their community, yes. you know, because at the end of the day, decisions need to be made, and you got to know who's out there making those decisions for you. You're so right. You're absolutely definitely right. Definitely important. You know, if I might add, the old saying is, if you vote, if you don't vote, you can't complain. Exactly. So, yes. and people love to complain, so they should get out and vote. Exactly. <laughs> Do something about it, right? Yep. Okay. Um, last week, there was a major drug bust in Waukegan. Mm -hmm. How can the city reduce the crime rates, and what are the plans in making that happen? Well, I think you see it in action. The fact that we caught 18 people that were involved in the distribution of cocaine through whatever means they were, involvement with soccer clubs, or just the fact that they were um, kind of hangers on and they saw the environment as something that they could make use of, that shows you that we're actually doing a good job Absolutely. with crime. Um, we catch pretty much everybody. Ever since I've been in here, pretty much every crime that's committed, we catch them. Now, we don't catch them right away, but policing isn't how some people imagine it. It's not television. Mm -hmm. Policing is reactive as opposed to preventative. Um, but our guys are good at catching. They have good intel. We, get, we keep as many officers on the street at any time as we can because we want these cars moving around, having them watching for people that maybe we're looking for. Okay. Plus, they develop a knowledge of the criminal um, population of the city. So they see somebody driving and they know that might be a little bit of a troublemaker. They may pull them over. And who knows, maybe the back seat is full of stuff they just stole from a home on Sheridan Road. Yeah. So it really is um, very effective. It's not perfect, and nothing is. But crime is down again in Waukegan by about 13%. Okay. Now, you get these bursts where you'll get a group come in. We have a group in town right now that we're chasing down that are working in, in as teams, and they're robbing people. And, okay. But we'll get them because you can't keep doing that. We're yeah. going to catch you. One of the things I'm proud of is we have more neighborhood watch um, chapters in Waukegan than ever because people are taking an interest in, in keeping their neighborhood safe and so they're really becoming involved. Great. And that's something that's going to have an impact on this community. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, the mayor does not have control over the school board. Right. But as a mayor, how would you collaborate to encourage students to graduate from high school and to further their education into college? Well, actually, that's something that I've been very concerned about. Um, 
you know, besides my, my job as mayor, and I was county board, and I have video um, photography sort of background, I also have been a teacher. And education is what is going to save this city. Absolutely. One of the things is it's generational. Now, you go back maybe 10 or 15 years. Um, at that point, we had a lot of dropout. And I don't know for sure what the percentage was, but it was way too high. Okay. As we've seen the new generations of kids coming into school, they are dropping out less. Because I think families that were new to the culture didn't understand the importance of keeping their children in school, and mm -hmm. many times they would take them out to go to work. Yes. Now that's changing. Um, I've been involved in trying to educate people in Waukegan about charter school opportunities. I took busloads of people into Chicago after I took office to take them on tours of charter schools so they could see how effective they are. I've worked with uh, St. Martin de Porres. I work with um, Waukegan to College, Envision Scholars. Uh, we're working on an early, a very early learning program with United Way to try to get a system in place that when a low-income mother goes to the hospital to give birth, they're asked to sign up with a program. They're, they're assigned a mentor who teaches them to teach their children. And we're hoping that that will have a long-term impact because right now, Kids are coming out of the Waukegan school system and even going to CLC and struggling there. Yeah, and we need to raise the level of, of education. There's an economic reason behind it too. If your population isn't well educated, and especially by grade three, if they're not reading at the national level, businesses look at that. And if they see a population that's not well educated or at least not educated to a standard they're looking for, they'll establish themselves somewhere else. So it's important that the people of Waukegan understand that education has more to do than just school itself. Absolutely. I, I agree with you very much, actually. I think that, you know, young people need to get out there and understand that education is really important. Yes. Definitely important. Um, one last thing. What are your closing remarks? Anything you want to tell the people? Well, um, I will say that we've been through some pretty tough times the last four years. Um, the economies, you know, beat us up pretty good. We had those storms in 2011 that just tore the city up, but we kept going. We, and I mean we as the body of government, were able to respond even though we were much smaller than we were, you know, four years ago. And you look at the, at the winter storm of 2011, we dug the city out in two days. You look at the summer storms and there were 3,000 trees down as well as all the power lines. We had ComEd here working with our public works people and we had the power back in seven days. The city can function, the city can serve, but the people of Waukegan, I'm very proud of the fact that they have begun to believe in their community again and to understand what our possibilities are. I think part of it is the fact that we present a positive image, that we're actually trying to accomplish things as opposed to just talking about them. We've cleaned up the pollution from the lakefront, you know, $40 million from the EPA without a penny coming from out of the city's pockets. Um, we've been kind of buying up land on the lakefront to be able to get it ready for development. We have, um, as I've said before, we've professionalized this body of government. Nobody comes here to get a job unless they're the best qualified person for it. And I think that's important that people know that their government is run like that. Absolutely. because. Some people get concerned, well, is it a person from my neighborhood? Is it of my nationality, my race? But in the end, I think everybody wants to know that the person that's working and using their tax dollars is the one that knows how to make the best use of it. Absolutely. And I think we've done that for the city of Waukegan. Well, that's great. Well, thank you, Mayor, for your time. Well, thank and you. once again, this is around your time, and I hope you can tune in with us every now and then. Thank you. That's thank great. you, Mayor. Thank you. Good job. Thank Wonderful. You. Really Thanks. enjoyed it.